happiness the surrounding green Freshness, sweetness, happiness to the surrounding green Take care of the nature before it takes care of you Well, welcome back. If you're joining us, you're watching Art Check on KUTV. We're talking about everything COP26 and excited to talk to Anne Angwini, who's a climate advisor. And here is more of the interview we had. Moving on, uh, there are many people out, or precisely, let's say, leaders who are still in denial that climate change is real. And uh, these are times we've seen countries pull out of you know agreements and all that stuff how do we make sure or how uh, do we ensure that climate uh, still remains a priority because we have to keep these leaders accountable so is it something we're going to see in COP26? It's definitely something we will see. About a week ago the IPCC report was released this is the intergovernmental panel on climate change it brings together policymakers, but more specifically scientists who have been studying the effects of climate change over the years. This particular report makes for sobering reading. When you read this report, it is very clear that this decade that we are in is going to be pivotal if we are going to do something about the future of our planet. The message comes out very clearly, and It says we need to consign coal to history, number one. We need to shift to clear energy sources. We need to protect nature. And last but not least, we need to come forward with climate finance that will be able to support vulnerable countries cope with climate change. The report has several um, highlights, but I'll just go into four of them. The first is that the 1.5% degree uh, centigrade will most likely be reached in the next two decades. So that is going to impact us unless we reduce our emissions. So that is a sobering message. It means that the world is going to warm up. But then again, uh, it also comes forward telling us that unless we do something about emissions, not only is the 1.5% going to be reached, but the weather events, the extreme weather events that we've been seeing are going to get worse. That then means that the adaptation that we've been trying to achieve the efforts that have been made need to be ramped up. That requires additional resources, additional finances. So for those who deny, this is a scientific report that has been written by people who are objective. We must do something about climate, not later, but now. And if we don't do anything about climate, the prosperity that we all anticipate, economic prosperity, for countries, especially in the developing country, uh, world, for the poor, all that we are doing to build up our economies will be lost because we did nothing about addressing climate change. All right, that's some really uh, good insights there. But another, co to, another conflicting thing I wanted us to talk about was how fit, someone did ask, how fit is UK? Uh, will you be able to, co to hold COP26? Given that there's some temporary, there's uh, the coal projects that UK has, but now they have been temporarily shut down. How would you address that? The coal project is something that uh, is being looked at at the very high level. The Prime Minister is engaging um, on this issue and so is the uh, COP president designate, Right Honourable Alok Sharma. So this is something that is being looked at um, very seriously and being considered uh, and we're looking to address this issue. But let me take us a step back. If countries look at perfection, 
Just as we say no human is perfect, no country is perfect. The measure of success is what is the determination and drive of a country to deliver on a promise. The UK has that determination. We are committed to delivering the promise of Paris. We are committed to delivering the outstanding issues. We are committed to delivering a successful COP. And this is not just internationally, but domestically. The UK has actually passed um, a law that, and that makes sure that by 2035, we will have reduced emissions by 78%. So we're looking, that has already been legislated into law, so it cannot be stopped. We are going to reduce domestic emissions to 78% by 2030, 2035, but in addition to that, we will soon be publishing a strategy on reaching net zero by 2050. So our commitment is not just at the global level, but domestically. And we believe that we are putting our words into action. So we can also be a showcase for other countries, other developed countries to follow suit as well. So you lead and then others follow. So why, would, uh, why should we be excited about COP26 before we wrap up? Well, we should be excited because um, Right Honourable Alok Sharma has been talking to a lot of countries, both the G7 and G20, to really secure ambitious NDCs, to really secure this emission reduction target from these countries, the big uh, developed countries, that the big emitters, let's call them that. So he's talking to China and to India and to other countries, Brazil, to really uh, underscore and emphasize the need to commit to reducing emissions. Uh, as we all know, climate does not hit particular countries. It's hitting the whole world. So everybody's going to be affected. So before the COP, we hope see countries coming forward and several have come forward with very ambitious targets to reducing their emissions by 2030 and to reaching net zero uh, by 2050. So this is something we're very excited about. Um, we hope that by the time the COP comes, uh, those who have submitted their targets um, will be ambitious and that the 1.5 degree, once the scientists have looked at what the emissions reduction targets will look like, the 1.5 degree will be reached. But additionally, one other aspect that I know has been on the minds of a lot of countries, including Kenya, a lot of developing countries, is the pledge of $100 billion. The financing pledge that was made in Paris. Will this be delivered? Access to these finances is critical to developing countries because without this um, financing, the transition to a low carbon economy for a lot of developing countries will be difficult. The transition to build up defenses uh, against climate change, climate smart infrastructure, um, to come up with early warning systems becomes very difficult. So once this $100 billion uh, commitment is delivered, then developing countries can access finance and can put climate front and center of their development efforts. Will COP26 be more of uh, walking the talk? Definite will be walking to the talk and I can assure you that the UK is looking to ensure countries deliver. We've had very many meetings both virtual and physical where it allows with a lot of leaders to really ensure that they come forward with ambition, but they come forward with action. So COP26 will be the action conference on climate change. Before we wrap up, probably this is the last uh, question I have. Do you, do you uh, as a climate advisor, do you feel like at some point we're going to achieve what scientists most of the time, uh, the targets we want the scientists are recommending? And I can tell you sometimes it can get depressing when you read the IPCC report, you know, you wonder, are we ever going to achieve anything? But 
A lot of people have talked about, and I personally have seen how the world has pivot, pivoted to address COVID. We have come together as a community, as a whole community, global community, to see how best to address COVID. Vaccines have been offered. Where countries have not been able to access vaccines, they have been offered around the world. Expertise has been offered. Scientists, doctors have worked together to come up with solutions. The same applies for climate change. The world must come together, and it is coming together, to see how best to address climate change. What is now required is for the leaders to commit, to commit their budgets, to commit their development plans, to commit to supporting innovation, to commit to taking on board the scientific proof. The evidence is now here. And with that commitment, action can be taken. So to answer your question, yes, I believe if leaders are committed, fully committed, then we can address climate change. It is not a lost cause. We have excellent ideas and innovations on how to address them. It is now time to take necessary action using those ideas and innovations and putting them into action. Your final words, Anne? Well, my final words are that I hope this COP, and I trust and believe that this COP will be about action. Um, I have never seen, uh, I have been in this particular field for over 20 years, working on climate and environmental issues and I have never seen a conference that has received a lot of global attention, but also the fact that um, the COP president is going around and talking to leaders before the actual event, uh, making sure that leaders are coming forward. Presidents are talking. Presidents are not only talking to each other, but they're talking to the world and committing and saying, my country will deliver on this. I trust that this COP will be an action-oriented COP and that we will see delivery of what was left out of Paris, what it, we will close off on those issues, and it will be a successful COP. And I can tell the youth and the future generations, we are listening to you. We want to hear your voices come forward, come with solutions, practical solutions. We will hear your voices. We will secure the planet for future generations. If I was to rate this interview of one of the greatest interviews I've had with Anne Nguyen, I've seen her talk about climate, why we should all be excited, why leaders need to be kept accountable, plus how far are we to attain 1.5 degrees Celsius, how are, what are the scientists going to say about it, what have we achieved, and where we are at right now. So this is such an interesting conversation and I'm really excited that she gets to sat, uh, sit down with us and have an awesome conversation this time. So, Thank you so much for watching this episode. My name is Anne Mashari. Until next time, stay tuned.